Hello, Nicole here. I'm at the Forney Museum with our auto archivist, Bill Fleming. And today we're going to walk you through our diecast model gallery. Welcome to the Forney's Gallery. This is a gallery of miniatures and models. Uh, we, when I say miniatures, I tend to, tend to mean those things that you can buy ready-made, models being those that, things build, that people build. This being a museum of transportation, we have a variety of things in the gallery. Well, if you look around, you'll see it is mostly automotive. One of the things that's one of the most recent acquisitions we've had a donation were ship models uh, built by Fred Tournier. Uh, and you'll see in the gallery, we have five of them and some others around the museum. If you were to walk on the floor of the museum or even in the gift shop, you'll see one. What we're seeing on the walls right now are matchbox models. This is a collection of about 600 different matchbox models, uh, matchbox uh, models of yesteryear, which you can see in many cases there are some that look an awful lot the same, but with different advertising, different color schemes, etc., to make up the collection of these, which is was a huge donation to the museum many years ago. Down below, there is also a collection of World War II German models. These were built by a donor to the museum uh, several years ago and cons consist of aircraft. Probably the ones that get the most viewing from people are the big railway guns down there on the bottom shelf. With the things that we have in the collection, we have uh, probably a thousand models in here and, or miniatures in total, uh, including the 600 matchbox. Then we also have, uh, from Dan Barry and Franklin Mint, we have about 150 of their models on display. Uh, the case that we're looking at right now was a donation from the estate, estate of James Sears and covers automobiles in their various color schemes that were uh, quite interesting during the 1950s. Starts at 1947, goes through 40, 59 with those cars, and with on the bottom shelf we see a number of Buicks. Now one of the things the museum can do because of all the models that we have is change our displays around from time to time. Right now we have a smaller display of the cars that could be seen or have been seen on the streets in Cuba. This is the kind of thing that we can uh, change from time to time. This display includes what are called promotional models as well as uh, die cast models and a number of photographs actually taken on the streets of Cuba. As we come around the museum, we also see a ceramic uh, miniature of a 1937 Packard that was done by Maynard Tischler, who was a was or is associated with the University of Denver as a ceramist uh, and has taught there for many years. As we look around the museum further on this in this part you'll see that we have like three different dioramas that are shown, a Studebaker dealership, and then a uh, tool, a Snap-on Tools uh, shop. And over to the side, on this side, we'll also have a small diorama of a, an old-fashioned McDonald's. Not to forget the history of transportation, we also cover the horse-drawn vehicles, like the stagecoach, which is a, a wooden model of a very early Conestoga wagon, which would have been made by Studebaker back in the 1800s, and one of their cars, of course, later on from about 1916, that uh, represented when Studebaker moved on to automobile manufacturing.
When we look around the museum, one thing we'll also see are a number of large-scale model cars. The museum has 22 models of what are known as posher models from a company that was in Italy. And they, their first one, the first one that they made was a, a Fiat, which we have down here on the bottom next to one of their Alfa Romeos. The company that started making cars like the Fiat in 1966 and continued through about 2000. Uh, since then, there have been a couple other companies that have, from time to time, take over production of some of the kits and make some others later ones. Museum has 22 of them, including the, a couple more Alfa Romeos and a couple of Mercedes on that end wall. Uh, as we go around the museum, we see a lot of things. Here is a display we try of French cars that you'll see. The top shelf are all Bugatti Type 41s, which is the Bugatti Royale, one of the largest and still most valuable cars ever made. Uh, and more, and on the walls we also have artwork. The pictures that we see here are ones done by Bruce White, and those are some that the, machine, that the museum does have for sale uh, as you know, prints, or in some cases even as originals. When we come on around the museum, or we're just going around the gallery here, we also see in front of us a, a diorama, of, which is an operational HO gauge railway. Uh, due to COVID, we can't really be running it right now, but in, uh, usually it is available for particularly kids to be able to run around the track, but that's just one that we can't power up at the moment. Looking over to the side over here, we see more of the poster models in the corner case uh, going from, we saw that earlier, Fiat, uh, and it goes up through late model cars like this Ferrari uh, Testarossa Spider, which is on the bottom shelf here. Silver color is kind of unusual on one of these, but that was a car that they was actually made by the factory for Agnelli, who was the head of Fiat. And, Porsche at that time. We also don't limit ourselves to just bottles and uh, die cast because here in front of us we'll see a couple of the cars of Barbie, whose full name was Barbie Millicent Roberts. And the top shelf in this case is presently devoted to Duesbergs. I like that yellow and green one. That yellow and green car was built for Gary Cooper. And it actually exists in that color scheme in a museum back in Massachusetts. The museum also has a number of advertisements which we can pull from time to time to be able to use as part of our displays. Not to be left out, we have fire truck collection here, uh, which was uh, mostly donated as part of one uh, donation. And down below, you will see Lionel trains so the railroading is not left out of the gallery here. These are Lionels, which were collected by uh, one of our deceased volunteers, Lee Dong, and include Lionel trains made right before and right after World War II. So the box set, for instance, in the top shelf, 
for all from the late 1930s to 1940. And the stuff lower generally is uh, much later than that, but still uh, into the early 50s. Just moving around the museum, we have displays of Cadillacs. And right in there, in the Cadillac display, you can also see that we have a Cadillac hearse, which is something that will be on display as we do a special exhibit for the month of October, highlighting funeral cars and uh, from both the horse-drawn and motorized eras. We come on around, of course, we don't have one of the original Tuckers, but we do have a Tucker you can take a look at in 118th scale, but still it shows the rear engine and uh, the Cyclops headlight on the vehicle. Oh, notice the trunk is in the front of the, the car. The trunk's in the front of the car, just like it is on a Volkswagen or a Porsche or a Tesla. Moving on, we have Chevrolets, and we have Fords, which range from Henry Ford's 1902 race car, before he was actually manufacturing automobiles, and not to be leaving aircraft out of the uh, transportation part of the exhibit, a Ford Trimotor made in 1927 when Henry Ford was manufacturing aircraft for a limited period of time, as well as those automobiles. Looking up into the case above, we see a whole number of Ford Thunderbirds in particular, which once again will be the subject of a display at the museum coming up in October. And these will be moved from the gallery, or from this exhibit in the gallery anyway, to a special exhibit for Thunderbirds, which is one of the things we can do by rotating all of the items that we have in the museum. We come in and visit it and we will uh, probably be trying to change some of these exhibits around. So it may be that you'll see what you've seen today and it may be that you'll see some other things when you come in. So come in and see us.